Welcome to today's 30 day growth challenge. My name is Drew. I'm one of the leaders here at The Way and I have the honor and privilege to do today's devotional. Today's portion of scripture is James 1, 9 through 11. Let's dive right in. Believers who are poor have something to boast about for God has honored them. If you've ever been poor or you're in a season of extreme lack, you found yourself relying on God and totally depending on his hand for provision. Whether it was you being a couple months late or um, paying the rent, or you were on the verge of getting your car repossessed, or you had that late electric bill notice, you were scared, you were afraid, you had no idea how you were going to get out of this situation. But some way, somehow, God showed up and he made a way where it seemed like there was no way. So you could testify to the goodness of God and you could boast in how God got you through that tough time. Let's go into the next sentence in that verse. Verse 10. And those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like a little flower in the field. Unfortunately, the average rich person They boast in their achievements. They boast in their acknowledgments. They boast in what they've acquired. There's a lot of self-made, self-paid ideology. It really comes from a place of self-work, self-righteousness, and it boils down to just attaining self-fulfillment, which at the end of the day, it eventually leads to self-destruction. I think of Matthew 23 12 where it says but those who exalt themselves will be humbled and in the next sentence it says they will fade away like a little flower in the field the land of israel it's known for its vast array of beautiful flowers they spring to life when the rains come they blossom they bloom but a little season after that they begin to wither away. And on the scale of eternity, this is how quickly a rich man also fades away in his pursuits. Here are some fundamental truths. Those who have less tend to be more thankful than those who are rich and seek to gain more and tend to never be satisfied. The poorest person who walks with God is better off than the wealthiest man who depends on their own riches. In the next verse, it says, the hot sun rises and the grass withers, the little flower droops and falls and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all their achievements. Yes, there's gonna be a season that the rich man gets to glory in everything they acquired. They get to celebrate in all the possessions they attain. But there's gonna be a season after that where life comes crashing down. It could be a health decline. It could be old age. The truth is there's gonna be a time when they realize that the end is near. I think about this. Whether rich or poor, our confidence must rest in our identity in Christ Jesus and trusting that he is our ultimate provider. There's nothing wrong with having possessions. We just can't let possessions have us. I think about the rich young ruler in Matthew 19, 21. He had so many possessions, but he placed a higher value on earthly wealth over heavenly wealth. Jesus even offered him treasure in heaven, but he still decided to walk away. We have to be careful that we don't place an emphasis on earthly treasure over heavenly treasure. When you're in pursuit of money or wealth, it's very easy to lose focus on advancing the kingdom of God. And by default, you end up building your own kingdom here on earth, which will eventually perish away. I think about Matthew 6, 19 through 21, where it says, Don't store up your treasures here on earth, where moth eat them and rust destroy them, and thieves break in and steal. But store your treasures in heaven, where moth and rust cannot destroy, and the thief cannot break in and steal. And wherever your treasure is, 
therefore your heart will be also. I think of Matthew 6, 24, where it says, you cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So in closing for today's uh, portion of scripture, I really want us to think about that, that our time here on earth, that we have to make sure that we're kingdom minded, we're mission minded, and we have to remember a, a wise man once said, money, when it's in the hands of the right person, it becomes a valuable tool. That person is a mega blessing. And by result, everybody around that person gets to be blessed. But money, when it's in the hands of the wrong person, it becomes a corruptible force. That person is dangerous and everybody around that person is in danger as well. We need to be kingdom minded, mission minded. I think about what we're doing in Uganda right now. We're going to purchase 63 churches. Yes, it's going to take finances. Yes, it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort, but we are investing into the kingdom of God. I think about all the little boys, all the little girls, all the men and women of Uganda. They, they've come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and now they're living their life-given purpose through Him. And we, when we invest into something like that, we are investing into something that will last forever. Thank you for tuning in into today's devotional. I really had a great time with you. Do me a favor, share some feedback, comment on something that you learned, or maybe some insight that the Holy Spirit revealed to you. Share it with, share it with a friend, and let's continue to grow in the Word of God together. Let's close out today in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together. I pray, Lord, that this word encouraged the body of Christ. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the insight you've given us through the perspective of being rich and through being poor. I pray, Lord, that as we go through life, we don't get caught up in the pursuit of wealth or in the pursuit of money, but that we would completely have focus on the pursuit of finding our identity in you and understanding that you are the true provider of all our resources. We thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.